This video is sponsored by LegalZoom. More about LegalZoom at the end of the video. Hey Wisecrack, Jared again. For 20 years, the kids of South Park have been skewering every sacred cow they can find. And at Wisecrack, that's just the kind of thing that gets us hot. In its 13th season, South Park masterfully merged two of its favorite targets for ridicule, religion and consumerism. And you all know what happens when we marry God and money. I just told you who I thought I was, a God. Okay, sure. But also a multi-layered argument about personal agency and the opaque nature of the economy. Bail out. Break open a bag of cheesy moves for this wisecrack edition on the philosophy of South Park's Margarita Bill. Religion has long been a handy tool for explaining the unexplainable. It's through clever religious allegory, then, that Margaritaville manages to tackle the economic crisis of 2008, and a mysterious system that, for many, remains unexplainable. The economy. When the seemingly all-powerful economy leaves South Park in tatters, an economic crisis has hit South Park and the nation like never before. Everyone is quick to direct their blame somewhere, including Wall Street and... It is the Jews! But it's Randy's characteristically bizarre perspective that builds a large following across South Park. Yea, it is an angry and unforgiving economy. To repent, we must stop frivolous spending. Taking his cues from old school Protestant ethics, Randy preaches that the economy is a petty, vengeful deity that must be placated by worship. We must let the economy know that we are capable of respecting it. No more needless spending. Randy's position draws from the fearful, punishment-oriented philosophies of the Old Testament, and South Park steers straight into those biblical parallels, right down to the flinging of the stones, I mean squirrels, by those who pass judgment on the fallen. Whichever of you guys has never bought anything frivolous, go ahead and huck the next squirrel. He among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. In fact, Randy's persecution of Kyle mimics the biblical role of the Pharisees. Our tireless work is obviously being undermined by this one Jew. An influential group of people who, in the New Testament, greeted Jesus' message with skepticism, paranoia, and ultimately, incitement of violence. This Jesus must die. Kyle's third act sacrifice, in which he has dinner with his enemy, takes on all of South Park's debt, and sacrifices himself for the community, furthers the biblical parallels that dominate the episode. What's he doing? He's paying for everyone's debts. Kyle's sacrifice parallels the crucifixion of Jesus, but where Jesus took on the sins of the world, go and sin no more. Kyle shoulders the debt of all South Park. <laughs> Just as Jesus' death was mourned by a weeping Mary as he was taken from the cross, Kyle's figurative death is mourned here by his own weeping mother. Kyle has died, Kyle is risen, Kyle will come again. Not unlike the hero of the New Testament, Kyle sets forth a philosophy which challenges and chastises the accepted norms of the community. But whereas Jesus set forth a religious code of conduct, Kyle sets forth a financial one. Do not be afraid! This is only plastic! It's just something made up by people! Truly meaningless until we put our faith in it! Faith is what makes an economy exist! Without faith, it is only plastic cards and paper money. His philosophy, known in the real world as faith-based economics, proposes the economy is us and should be trusted, not feared. Since people drive the economy, Kyle argues, we are at one with the economy forever and ever. Amen. Margaritaville effectively positions the economy as a modern religion unto itself. Throughout the episode, Randy and Kyle's conflicting arguments don't merely demonstrate religious parallels, they spring from some really interesting economic and social theory. For example, Randy's unforgiving message of self-discipline and self-denial maps well with the ethics described by German sociologist Max Weber in the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. For Weber, the Protestant values of austerity and frugality were crucial components in the development of modern capitalism. In other words, work until you die and don't make any time for fun. While Randy preaches economic restraint, Kyle offers a very different take, one reflected in the work of British economist John Maynard Keynes, who proposed consumer spending is what truly keeps the economy humming. If you want economic growth, you just gotta keep moving that paper. But hey, if you don't know much about these two economic perspectives, South Park is not surprised, because one of the big ideas tackled in this episode is that economics are deliberately made too difficult for most people to understand. 
This strategy of linguistically keeping information at arm's length from the everyday citizen is known as techno-strategic discourse. And it's so powerful and so dangerous, Margaritaville dedicates an entire B storyline to demonstrating it in action. Take, for example, when Stan visits his bank and is treated to a string of jargon. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund, then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest before his money magically disappears without explanation. And it's gone. What do you mean? I, I have $100. Not anymore, you don't. Poof. Of course, we all know economics isn't magic, but most of us don't quite know the intricacies of what economics are. And it's gone. What? And as the subprime mortgage crisis of the late 2000s demonstrated, those who are in the know are counting on and even profiting from our ignorance, even if they themselves might be ignorant too. I'm not really sure how it works. You'll, you'll have to speak with the people at the top. French philosopher and turtleneck enthusiast Michel Foucault argued that, in our modern era, power is no longer concentrated, but dispersed through complex systems, prisons, religious authorities, and as South Park highlights, finance. Unlike traditional conceptions of power, which might imagine a bunch of bankers in smoke-filled rooms conspiring to screw everyone over, Foucault explored how individuals each play their own tiny role in this system of power, often ignorant to the complete workings of the system. Power, dispersed in this way, shows up in South Park as Stan climbs the ladder of helpless bureaucrats, each of them powerless to the rules, or magic, of the system they participate in. In scene after scene, so-called experts sustain and amplify power through the exploitation of confusion. You see, son, we lumped thousands of these Margaritaville installment plans together into Margaritaville-based securities, then chopped those securities up in a way that we could sell them to banks. Stan goes to return his Margaritaville at Sur La Table, only for him to be shooed off to the finance company. Yeah, we can't give you your money back for that. Yeah, no. The finance company points Stan to Wall Street, the people really running the show. Only for Stan to learn from Wall Street that it's ultimately the Treasury Department who's in charge. Oh, that makes sense. The interesting piece here is that Stan, as he journeys into the world of finance to find out who's in charge, finds out that no one is really in charge. Sirs, another insurance company is going under. Now determining most prudent move for insurance company. As the very nature of money is an amorphous abstraction, its source, and with it a source of power, never seems to be anywhere. Anyone who's turned to a lawyer, to a doctor, or to a computer technician for support probably knows the drill. No matter how dense the language or how straightforward the problem, you're simply expected to trust the experts. But what's the result of all this technocratic babble? According to South Park, the consumer is essentially exhausted into submission, either willfully throwing himself at the mercy of the technocrats or uh, smashing his dad's blender on the floor. In matters both religious and economic, Margaritaville challenges the seemingly distant and unknowable forces that govern our lives and fates. Everyone's affected by it. It's like all the money just vanished. If money isn't real, if the powerful deliberately complicate things in order to retain their power, and if the answers we seek don't necessarily lie with the experts or with the divine, then whom does South Park suggest we blame in the face of economic or spiritual misfortune? Maybe the answer is found in the Jimmy Buffett song of the same title, Margaritaville, in which a drunk man sits at a bar and laments his failed relationship. By the end of the tune, the man gradually realizes his own drinking problem may have contributed to his failure in love. So the answer, personal responsibility. It's a hell of a drug. Wow, the new Margaritaville with salsa dispenser. Bottoms up, wisecrack. Cheers. But life can't always be eating cheeseburgers in paradise. Sometimes you run into legal issues and don't know where to turn. LegalZoom is the smart way to take care of your legal needs. They make the process of setting up a new business and more a total breeze. And LegalZoom is giving Wisecrack fans 15% off their purchase. LegalZoom eliminates the guesswork of having to find an attorney you trust, wondering how much your legal work will cost, and having to take unnecessary trips to a lawyer's office. And they never validate your parking. LegalZoom works with a network of independent attorneys to help you with all sorts of projects. The formation of your company, wills and trusts, trademarks and patents, 
patents, contracts, and more. When we decided to do Wisecrack full-time, it was crucial that we set up our business right, and you really want to get it right the first time. Separating personal stuff from the company and navigating all the intricacies of state and local laws can be a massive pain, but LegalZoom offers the services and resources to make sure you get it done right. So whether you need help with your business, family planning, or general legal advice, head to LegalZoom.com slash Wisecrack at the link in the description below. And remember, Wisecrack fans get 15% off their purchase. Thanks to LegalZoom for sponsoring this video. That's all for now, Wisecrack. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss a thing. Peace, guys.